Welcome to Ask Me Almost Anything. I am your host, Greg Alonzo. Today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to basically answer uh, a lot of the questions we get via email. And how we go about selecting them is any of our longtime subscribers who have uh, sponsored a video, well, they get first. Okay, let's start with Amir. Amir had a question about medical insurance. Are you required to have medical insurance when you visit these countries? Well, it depends on how long your stay. But let me first qualify that. In my opinion, you should have some type of international medical insurance if you're traveling because you'll never know what's going to happen. For example, my U.S. medical insurance is not valid in Europe. Now, do I have insurance in Austria since I plan to be here for a long-term stay? Yes, I do. And uh, I'm fortunate in that uh, since we actually are residents, we're part of the Austrian insurance program, so it comes out of our taxes. But I do recommend if you're going to stay, for example, let's say uh, the Republic of Georgia. Georgia, you could renew your visa for up to a year. I definitely would recommend having some type of medical insurance to cover you. Amir, I hope that helps you out. And now we have a question from Deidre. Deidre wants to know about public transportation. Deidre, in Europe, public transportation is great. Uh, for example, here in Innsbruck, basically there's a tram or, or a bus every couple of minutes. Now we live up in the mountains, up in Hutting, so unfortunately we only get a bus every 15 minutes and the trams don't come up this high. You know, but like my wife and I always joke, just put a little suntan lotion on and <laughs> sit there at the bus stop and get a bit of sun. So that, that works for us. But now I, I know what else you want to know about public transportation is how economical is it? Well, I'll just use an, Amer an American expression. It's pennies on the dollar. It's very, very inexpensive. And if you are going to be in a country, let's say you're a nomad and you're going to be in that country for three months, I would definitely recommend getting a, a bus pass or a public transportation pass, which covers everything for a month, three months, however long you're going to be there. Even if you're just a tourist for a week, I highly recommend you get a bus pass for the entire week. It's basically just unlimited. You jump on, jump off. So I think that is, is something that's very, very beneficial. And most of these European countries uh, put a lot of money into their public transportation systems. Now we have a question from Roger. Roger wants to know about driving. Uh, in the EU countries, no problem. Your license is valid. Other situations, an international driver's license is, is very good. I, I had an international driver's license at one point, and uh, it worked just fine. Now, something where I will caution you. So if you're like me and from California, <laughs> there are no freeways in Europe. Pretty much everywhere you go, you have to pay. So their highways are basically toll roads. Are the signs different? They're, they're basically similar. The design is similar, uh, but not exactly the same. So you have to pay attention. A railroad crossing looks like a railroad crossing sign, but then again, it's different. In fact, that theirs are a little more art deco. <laughs> but, so that's kind of a plus. But yeah, driving license is fine. Uh, I would recommend the international driving license. For example, if I decide to drive here in Austria, then it would be recommended to me as a resident to get an Austrian driver's license. How difficult is it? Just have to pass the test. Ah, but it's not like the US. <laughs> you would have to pass the test. Well, I would have to pass the test in German. So if you were in Portugal, it would have to be in Portuguese. In the US, we're very lucky. They basically ask you, what language do you speak? And they give you a handbook to study. Uh, let's see. Now we have a question from Gabe. And Gabe is asking about long-term rentals. If you use I, something like an Airbnb, you know, you can always negotiate with the owner. How long you're going to stay can depend on the price. Now, let's be realistic. If you're going to stay five days, you're going to pay top dollar. So you have to shop around. Do many of the landlords like long-term stays? Yes. Why not? It, it's money in their pocket. So it just depends. And, you know, you have to do your homework. Well, <laughs> One of my friends who's a nomad said when she's not in the country, she spends her time out of the country doing her work and then looking for Airbnbs for her next uh, 
trip. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say it's that difficult, but I have one friend, Stephen. He's been living in Airbnbs for, gee, I think I've known Stephen like five years now. And uh, he basically stays three months in a country. Uh, here we have a question uh, from Erica. Erica is a vocalist and she wanted to know about recording studios. I can't speak on recording studios in Austria because I haven't had, I haven't had the re a reason to check them out. However, when I was in Ukraine, Ukraine is a very good jazz scene and they have very good studios and entertainers from other countries would come and record in Ukraine and hire professional musicians and save thousands of dollars. So that's a big plus. Again, you just have to research the country. Uh, here we have a uh, classic <laughs> from, from Raymond. And uh, excuse me, Rockmod, it's from Rockmod, not Raymond. Uh, internet speeds. Well, we just switched our speed to 5G and the internet's fast in most European countries. And what's even better, in, in most places, it's free. They have Wi-Fi hotspots, and you can pick that up. All the cafes and restaurants, bars, everyone has free Wi-Fi. You can access it. It's not like in, dare I say, my home <laughs> in California. We have to pay for internet. But here, it's phenomenal. I, I've been told, and I don't know, I haven't been to Korea in years, but I've been told that Korea has the fastest internet. My guess, the fastest internet would be in Estonia when it comes to Europe. Estonia is very, very internet and computer uh, or oriented country. They vote online in, in Estonia. Uh, what about co-working spaces? Jimmy wants to know about co-working spaces. Lots of great co-working spaces. The nomads love working in, out of co-working spaces because they get to meet up with people they know, make new friends. Myself, I'm a little different. I like to make friends with the locals. And it's especially helpful learning languages. And like my wife, my wife is German, is getting very, very good and quickly because she's out in front of more locals than I am. Uh, so Jimmy, yeah, work, co-working spaces are great. Who knows, maybe someday we'll open one. It's an idea we throw around a lot. Uh, let's see, we have a question from Pedro. Pedro wants to know about currency exchange. Pedro, this is a good one. I would recommend going to the banks, but still check what rate do they charge. Some banks don't charge, some do. Best example I can give you is in Prague. Prague is highway robbery. Uh, some of those independent own, independently owned uh, kiosks, they'll charge quite a hefty sum to exchange currency. Uh, one of my friends uh, had told me about a, a scam that was going on in Prague where street vendors would change currency for you. And what they were actually doing is not giving you uh, check crowns. <laughs> they were giving out uh, Belarusian rubles. So basically they were just taking your money and giving you worthless currency. So again, to be safe, I, I wouldn't even trust airports. The rates aren't that good. Train station, the, report, the rates are lower as well. But go to the banks. That is something I would do as I, as I would enter the country if they're not using the euro already with, with cro crowns, krona, whatever the currency is in that country, lira in Turkey. I think that's very important to at least have maybe a hundred euros in your pocket. And then you can always go to the bank and make a change. So that's pretty much what we're going to talk about today. Uh, again, you know, off, you know, don't hesitate to send us your emails and ask me almost anything. Don't forget to buy me a coffee. We love our sponsors. And, um, you know, we're always trying to think of how to make this more entertaining instead of just a talking head. I hate talking heads myself. I, so uh, I, for those of you who follow on Traveler's Tales, you know, you know, we always end by saying kartistos, which uh, in Greek means to the strongest. So today we're going to play a little game and try something different. I will sign off by saying Sampai Kartamu Lagi. Now you get to send us an email and guess what language it's in. <laughs> and the winner will get a prize. Ha 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 ha. You'll get a pat on the back. <laughs> so Sampai Kartamu Lagi.